Hey guys, welcome to another video on Bharat in Germany. My name is Bharat. In this video, we have a special guest with us who is Deepak and he is doing his PhD in biochemistry from LMU Munich. Deepak, welcome to the call. Tell us a bit about yourself and then we jump into our questions. Hello everyone. Thanks for having me. It's good to be here. So my name is Deepak and I'm a third year doctoral researcher at University of Munich in Germany. I am specializing in the protein crystallography of DNA binding proteins. And uh, I came to Germany to start my PhD in the year 2018 towards the end. And since then I am here uh, pursuing uh, my research. So about a bit my, uh, about the fellowship. So my research is supported by DAD research grant. And uh, so that's what I have been doing so far, yeah. Mm -hmm. I see that you're in the office right now. It never ends. So as long as you could work, <laughs> so trying to get those hours in. Yeah, to, to anybody who's watching this video, it's right now seven o'clock in the evening and you generally work till like six or something and like you go back home. But yes. Deepak is still at office at seven. Sure, exactly. So you would want to get as much work done. So mm -hmm. I knew that we had this call today. So I plan my experiments accordingly so that I could stay a bit longer. So mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. And Deepak, like, how are the COVID regulations right now? You can, like, come to the university just fine? Or, like, is there some kind of regulation there? Oh, yes. So there has been no uh, restrictions uh, until now, at least. So I know that uh, my friends and colleague in USA or in India, so they had their labs shut. So they were not allowed to work. But in Germany, especially in my lab or at uh, the faculty where I am, so the labs were open throughout the year, even during the first wave, second wave. It doesn't match matter. So researchers have to be on the research always. So... So it has been working good so far here. Let's talk about the PhD process a bit, Deepak. So when you were starting applying for PhD programs, like what were the challenges that you were seeing? How did you apply? Like, you know, what was the process? Because, you know, there's a structured program. There's the traditional programs where you write to the professors and like do all of this stuff. So kind of like give us some details there. Yeah, sure. So somebody who is currently in the process of applying a PhD. So like you said, there are two options. So either somebody could go for a structured PhD. So there are international PhD programs at every university, like here at my department, there's a international PhD program in life sciences and, or somebody could go for a individual PhD. So I opted for individual PhD because I wanted to have more control over my research. However, in a structured PhD, you have a specific uh, program. You have to finish in those particular years and you can do only a limited amount of things. So um, I graduated from IIT Bombay and uh, soon after in 2018, I wanted to go for PhD. I knew that, okay, this is something that I want to do. So I was applying in Europe only because that's what I thought would be the main area. However, what I really thought interesting about Germany, uh, just to tell you, I had few uh, positions already uh, secured in Czech Republic and in Poland, but then I saw this particular position where I'm working right now where the project was really interesting. So I thought maybe it's good, uh, maybe it's a good idea to uh, come to Germany because of the networking and the interdisciplinary amount, uh, interdisciplinary work that uh, that is carried out here. So that's how I decided that, okay, I'll come to Germany. About the process, so how I did it is that I made a list of professors, universities and countries and which cities I want to go. And for individual PhD, I have been emailing those professors with my CV, with my statement of uh, purpose and motivation letter. And also I asked my professors at uh, IIT Bombay to send them recommendation letter. So that's, that's how the process has been. So throughout the Europe, not just in Germany. Because most of the people, they start their PhD search by taking a look at the DAD um, database. And they are like, I've seen over and over again, like the number of positions available are always like very less. So were you also like applying to um, the writing to the professors directly or like? Exactly. So, so that's what I did. So uh, after my graduation in 2018, I wrote to the professor. I saw the advertisement and uh, there was a couple of rounds of interview. Uh, then uh, I was selected. So I came here on the house tele, which is the position paid by the university. But uh, there was an Indian postdoc in my lab who had his uh, PhD done on the DAD grant. So he suggested that you could be on that grant, uh, on the fellowship, because it's a reputed fellowship. It, uh, there are limited number of seats, like you said. Mm -hmm. So I started this process. And uh, in January 2019, I flew back to India for my interview. So there was uh, a big panel uh, of six professors, one from Germany and five from India, different research fields. So they interviewed me. And uh, after that, uh, they sent me the uh, DAD uh, uh, application letter, admission letter. So 
So that's how the process has been. So basically you apply for the DAD uh, fellowship, then there's the application procedure that one follows, and then they select few people for that. And after uh, first round of selection, they invite you for the interview, and then they uh, send you to Germany for your German course for two months, which is, uh, I think, really good uh, to start your day-to-day uh, -day life in Germany. And then in October, the next year, you start your uh, fellowship and your research. How much is the grant, if I may ask? Um... Is that enough to like sustain yourself? Sure. Yeah, it, it's it's a public uh, information, so it's, it's no yeah. secret. So it's okay. uh, twelve hundred euros uh, that you are paid here, and on top of that, you could get different benefits. Like you could travel to India, so you get paid for that. You could also apply for subsidies to learn German, subsidies to uh, subsidies for the accommodation, and especially mm -hmm. you may know, like in Munich, it's really expensive. So yes. I am surviving this with this amount in Munich. So. It, yeah. it won't be expensive anywhere else in Germany. So it's it's a really good amount, a decent amount, I would say. Exactly. I mean, like Munich is the most expensive German city and everything is just like crazy expensive. How much do you end up like paying in private expenses? Like how much is your rent and stuff? So I would say, especially like I'm doing PhD, so I don't want to stay in a student hostel. So mm -hmm. I stay in a VG, like a shared apartment uh, with uh, two other researchers. So I pay 600 euros, uh, including everything every month. The students who are applying new now, like from India. So what kind of things, what kind of platforms, first of all, they should be looking for the PhD programs? So, so I would say maybe if somebody wants to do for a structured PhD program, then they should for sure look at, uh, there are different websites, like you said, DAAD, mm -hmm. PhD in Germany, how to PhD, find mm -hmm. a PhD. So there are multiple websites, which you, if, you just, if somebody just Googles, then they will find it. But if somebody wants to go for just uh, individual PhD, then I would suggest is that you first should know what research area interests you. Mm -hmm. And then you could directly apply to the professor through the email, mm -hmm. like the way I did with your right. SOP, with your uh, CV. And then if uh, they see the potential, then they go for multiple rounds of interview and then you are selected. So. I think that's the easiest way because when you write an email, you get a reply instantly if the email is generous. Mm -hmm. But if you go for a structured PhD program, then you apply, you wait for five, six months, and maybe at the end, you don't know if you're selected or not. Right. So there are two different things. Each has its own benefits, pros mm -hmm. and cons. About like applying to professors like individually, like what I like to um, see is like, okay, you go to the department's website, you see like what kind of research they're doing right now. And like, then you essentially like, try to match the, um, do you send the abstract right away or do you just write the cover letter? You, you just send the cover letter. You say that, okay, I read your paper and it's really interesting. And I would really like to uh, work on that area. And if there are PhD positions available, then they let you know. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes what could also work in your favor is that, let's say there's no position available with mm -hmm. the professor. Then in those cases, what you could say is that, okay, uh, the professor doesn't have the funding. So you could apply for a DAD fellowship like the way I did. So that also helps in that way. So I, I tell you my story. I was um, finished my master's uh, at TU Hamburg. And like at the last day, I was giving my defense and the supervisor, I was talking to him. I was like, look, hey, this is going to be the end score or something now. And do you think I will be able to like get a PhD position? And my score was 2.5 in master's. And like he said right away, like, <laughs> you can forget about it. Like, you know, people are here with like 2.0, like looking for PhD positions and so on. Have you seen like the master's programs or something like being a massive integrator? Um, if you can get a PhD or not, like what are your experiences with that? Yeah, um, so what I would say is that when I applied for PhD in let's say Poland or in Czech Republic, I was admitted right away after the interview. But in Germany, the case was a bit different. So my professor interviewed me, he liked my profile, but he said that, okay, I have to send you transcripts and degrees uh, from your bachelor's and master's to the administrative department of the university. So they have to check if you are as good at least as the German students. So they don't want to take anybody who is not as good as the German students. So that's what I think uh, that, that, that I think uh, at least matters. And they also ask for a certificate that you're in the top 10% of your class during your master's. So they really wanted to be sure that I'm the right candidate for the university and for the research. So I would say having a good academic uh, score during your graduation and uh, during your studies in general, it helps, but uh, it's not uh, the end of the world. I think uh, you could still get few PhD positions uh, where, when especially you come with the funding, like when you have a DAD fellowship. So, Any other tips or advices you would have for the students who are planning to apply for a PhD? 
Yeah, sure. So um, since I'm having my DAD fellowship with me and I am also DAD Young Ambassador, so I have been helping students throughout past two years with their doubts and applications. So what I see most of the time is that students, they don't have a very uniform CV. So they, they just have some information in the CV which, which is not well organized or they put something which is not even relevant for the research. So having a good CV for sure helps because that's the first thing professor would be seeing or any structured program committee would be seeing when they screen you. And after that, I think, like I said, having a good academic score, at least a first class um, degree during your master's and bachelor, it really helps. And apart from that, I think it depends on how interested you are and how well aware you are of the research in which you are going to apply. So that, that, that would be my tip, yeah. Perfect. Um, Deepak, thank you so much for taking out the time for this call. It was very nice talking to you. And I didn't know that you were also like that uh, young ambassador. I think like that's also something that people should try for when they're in India. I think it's a very nice program to give you a lot of exposure. Perfect. Thank you so much for taking out the time. It was very nice talking to you. Thank you for having me. Good to be here. Bye. Anybody else who is watching this video and if you have any kind of questions, you can also contact Deepak directly on his LinkedIn profile. I will put the link also in the description. We have also more free resources that you can take a look at in the description of the video. And if you have still further questions, just the comment section is open. Write to us something there. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.